Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna talk about my first $100,000 month and my journey to it. And then honestly, I wanted a good title and first $100,000 month's like a great title. But I also want to talk about my record month, which is January 2023, which was a few months ago now. It's April 2020, or 2024, I said 23. It was January 24, it's April 2024 when I'm recording this video and it was a $380,000 a month. But the story from zero to 100K, and then from 100K to 380, it's both valuable, just different stages. And I know most people on the internet are probably trying to get from zero to 10K, so I'll talk about that too, because you gotta go from zero to 10K before you can go to zero to 100K, obviously. But right now, I'm here at the Winnable headquarter, the Winnable house, and I'm just feeling really inspired. We had a mastermind event yesterday for me and some of my top students and some of the top creators on Winnable. It's a platform where sports betting content creators can sell their sports betting predictions and daily fantasy sports predictions for money. And it's very scalable. Like even if you're selling picks for 10 bucks, you can sell it to thousands of people. And that's a big part of how I made so much money. But my story starts in high school. And I wanted to play college sports. I wanted to play college baseball. I was just ultra competitive and I loved playing sports. And I didn't get to, and it crushed me. Like any athlete, when they first don't play sports, it sucks. There's a huge letdown. For pro athletes, it happens in their 20s or their 30s, sometimes 40s if they play long enough. And then for me, it happened when I was 19. So I go to college, society's pushing me that route. My dad really, I was really, I'm, was really close to my dad and my mom as a kid and they just pushed college on me so hard because for them they grew up poor they got degrees and it got them a job and to them that was like being rich just having a job and to me i viewed them and i was like i want to live a life i want to live life like this right here <laughs> you're not getting this backyard with a job boys you you're not you know you're getting a box and you're going to a nine to five to sit in another box and it's, just, it's a mess but I went to college, right, because I was young and they were pushing me and there wasn't a lot of entrepreneurs on the internet. There wasn't videos like this that I could watch that I'm making now. It's part of why I give back because YouTube videos saved me. They helped me escape ultimately. And now I want to help mentor people that might have parents like I had. They're great parents, but they give shitty money advice, you know what I'm saying? But they're great parents still. And I went to college. I was like, you know what? I want to compete. I'm going to win a reality TV show. Fuck it, I can't play college sports. There's a gatekeeper to that. If the coaches don't recruit you, they don't invite you to their team, you can't play with them. I get on a TV show. So I went on YouTube, I typed in how to get on reality TV. Started watching Dan Giesling's uh, stuff. If you look up how to get on reality TV podcast, he has some great stuff. I binge watched that. And then I actually trained myself on how to talk on camera. I don't want to get too deep into all that because it's not as relevant. but. I learned skills that helped me get on TV. It wasn't just luck or a fluke. I ended up getting on TV at 22. I won a survival show. I also, before that, I joined the National Guard, Airborne Infantry in the Army for the Texas Army National Guard. And that helped me a lot too because I learned to embrace the suck. I had a pretty easy life growing up. My parents gave me a good life, good neighborhood, and I didn't have to stress. So I was kind of soft, like a lot of guys in American society these days are. So I can admit I was really weak, but I wasn't deep down to my core, but I was just, everything was so easy, I was soft. So when I got in the army, it surrounded me with alpha males that taught me how to act as a man. And it really helped me develop into a savage. And becoming a savage in the army through training, airborne school, ranger school, basic training at Fort Benning, Georgia. When I went on the TV show, I dominated. It was a cakewalk because I had done something that was harder and I had a different perspective than all the other kids on that survival show. To them, that was the hardest thing they'd ever done. To me, it was a walk in the park, it was a vacation. And I even got to miss some training in the army and I was like, missing that alone is worth being out here starving because <laughs> my army unit was so tough. But I win that TV show, it gives me a ton of confidence. But that TV show was just a one-time thing. I got. 125 grand, I paid like 40 grand in taxes or whatever it was. And I craved making that money again. And I even told myself, that's not the last time I'm gonna get 100K. And when I told myself that, I believed it, but I also thought, fuck, dude, how am I gonna get 100K? 
like, it's hard to get 100K wired to your bank account. I was like, that's not gonna be the last time. I told myself that. In a 400 square foot, zero bedroom apartment on campus at UTSA in San Antonio. I remember this so vividly, boys. Like I was looking at the check, not a check, but it was a wire, but I, I think I printed the receipt or maybe I, I was looking at the banking app on my phone, but it was 124 grand. It was just under 125, so I say 125. But like I was looking at it and I was like, holy shit, dude, I have so much money in there. <laughs> like it was nuts. I was only 22 and that was so much money for me. And I was like, I'm not gonna let this be the last time I feel this feeling. That was my first reaction in my head, in my brain. I don't know why, I'm just, maybe I'm just wired that way, but that was my first reaction. Anyways, I also, uh, had, I also had started making YouTube videos at that time after the TV show. I didn't know what to make videos on, so I just made videos like a vlog of my life, going to the Nike outlet and buying a good deal on clearance, it was a pair of Kobe's actually, a red pair of Kobe's, size 11. And I bought them for like 40 bucks, I sold it for 80 on eBay. I made a YouTube video of that. And then I was like, what else do I like to do? Sports betting. I love sports, I love making money. And I was like, you know what, a lot of people don't know about sports betting. It took me a while to learn what the spread was and the money line and things like that. So I said, how to bet on sports for beginners. I made that video. and. A guy reached out, he commented on that video, and he was a fan of mine from the TV show, but he also had a handicapping business where he posted free predictions on YouTube, and then he charged like 20 bucks a day for his VIP picks. And he showed me what he was doing and how much money he was making, and we became friends, really because he's a fan of mine on the TV show, but he had $100,000 in his PayPal account. It was gnarly, man. It was just like, holy shit, this guy's made 100K selling pics on YouTube, and he's only getting like 500 views a video. Like, seriously, n almost no views. And it's just video it was just videos like this. Like, you just make a video with a shittier background. He had like a blanket behind him as the background. And I was like, oh, wow, the sports bettors really pay for pics. I didn't even know that was a thing. And obviously, I'd seen Vegas Dave as well on Instagram. Like, that was a big thing for me, seeing Vegas Dave. I watched him from afar. And I knew that like it wasn't real. There's no way that people are making millions off betting like he's claiming. But I knew that he was really making money selling picks. And I was like, man, that's quite crazy. Like I wonder if I did that, but I actually gave good picks and I was actually honest with people when I lost, probably could make more. The truth is you always make more doing it like Vegas Dave. So I don't make more than him, but you still make a good living, right? So I started doing that, started a YouTube channel, sports betting education, and it didn't go anywhere, but I knew what was possible because I had seen that guy's PayPal account. So I knew it was 100% possible and it was a way to make money. And I thought that that would be the most fun, ultimate dream lifestyle is making money like that. So I kept at it on and off. I'd push hard for a month. I wouldn't make much money. I would take a month off. I'd push hard you know, and kind of back and forth, like side hustle money. Like my best month, I might've made a thousand bucks, right? And a lot of months I made under 200. But I didn't give up. And ultimately, I end up transitioning from being a recruiter in the army, selling stuff on eBay, to selling door to door, building a door to door sales team. And then door to door, if you wanna make a million a year, which that was my goal, you need to be a beast. You need to make like a quarter million a year selling alarms, which home security, which is what I was selling. And then you probably need to recruit about three offices, three offices of 30 dudes. So about a hundred dudes that you recruit and that you manage. Now my leadership skills, my ability to talk on camera, my ability to speak publicly, it had all gone up through the experience I had in life. So I'm like, okay, how am I gonna get in touch with studs? Well, it's hard to find studs just walking around, but on the internet, they're out there. And I knew TikTok was hitting the scene because Gary Vee kept saying it. Anytime Gary Vee says something over and over, I mean, that guy, he's, he has predicted a lot of things. Even if you think he's annoying, he's predicted a lot of things correctly. So, like, all right, Gary Vee's been saying TikTok. I'm going to get on TikTok. And all the skills that I had from YouTube videos, even though my YouTube never went viral, 
translated over to TikTok perfectly. I got 3 million views on my first video. So just imagine, I probably made 200 videos on YouTube with nothing to show for it. And I didn't give up, I just kept doing it because I knew eventually it would work. That first video on TikTok, I did not expect it to do well. I was just like, hey, let's just do it on TikTok. It's, it's crazy, like that video changed my life. That was the first time that a video I made had over 5,000 views. It had three million views by the end of it. And then I got hooked on TikTok and obviously my first video popped off, but I also like put a ton of effort into learning how to grow on TikTok. And I would watch YouTube videos every day. I'd wake up, I would work out in my garage gym, listen to a TikTok growth video for 10, 15 minutes every single day. And then I would record TikTok videos just talking, just spitting game in my garage maybe using a green screen, whatever. And it was side hustle entrepreneur TikToks designed to recruit door-to-door -door salesmen. So I'm going into 2021 and I've got a freaking army of savages. I've got so many door-to-door -door sales reps. And then in a flag football tournament, I tear my Achilles and I can't walk that summer. So I can't do door-to-door, -door. it's unbelievable. But at the same time, my mom was going through cancer and she only had a few months left. So I was like, honestly, I was so happy that I tore my Achilles because it's like, okay, this gives me a good excuse not to sell door to door. It's crazy how that sounds because why didn't I just make the decision not to sell door to door? But like at the time I couldn't because I had so much money right there. And do you hear how crazy that sounds, guys? Like my mom passed away that year and I was going to go sell door to door and she only had like seven months left. I would have been away like three to four of those months. That's crazy. That's what money does to you. Even someone like me, I'm smart and I know that money's not the most important. That's what money does to people. That's fucked. Cause you know, I love my mom and I loved her so much, like as much as a boy could love his mom. And um, it's just weird, right? But thank God I tore my Achilles, I didn't have to leave. And the first week my Achilles tore in the first couple of days, I forget what I did, but I did nothing because I couldn't walk, I just laid there. And then day three, I was like, I'm gonna try to make some money. It's time to try to make some money. So I knew that the sports betting YouTube stuff worked and I was a beast at TikTok, so I took the sports betting and put it on TikTok. So obvious, why didn't I do this before? I have no clue. But it took me tearing my Achilles and sitting around all day to do this. And I didn't even know what I was doing because I wasn't watching basketball at the time. I was so caught up in business and building my sales team. And I said, you know, I did a little bit of research. I gave out a free pick. I'm like, I like the Pelicans, minus 10 points. And if you guys want my VIP pick, I absolutely love it. Go to my website, purchase it, it's 25 bucks, and I will email it to you. And I did not expect anyone to buy it, but six people purchased. And when they purchased, at the time, I did not have a VIP pick, because I, I figured no one would buy it, honestly. So I have 150 bucks and no pick, well, I just went on the internet, I did a ton of research, and I was like, man, if I can win this, these guys will buy again tomorrow. So I honestly, I, I think I won, but I don't even remember, to be honest with you guys. But just making the $150 was such, an, such a positive impact on me. It's like, holy cow. So every day I pushed hard. Every Friday I did $5 Fridays. Every Tuesday I did $2 Tuesdays. And um, dude, I was just selling hard. I was live streaming. I made 30 grand that month and I made between 20 and 30 grand three months in a row. And then I called my friend Trent, who I was building the door-to-door -door sales force with. And I was like, bro, honestly, I'm just making too much money. I, I'm not gonna do door-to-door, -door, bro. Like, I gotta keep doing this. And he was cool about it, he understood, because I mean, obviously, if you make money on the internet, you're not gonna go sell door-to-door. -door. So, I get through that football season, I peak at $80,000. And the way it works is people pay me on a Shopify store. I put their email into a spreadsheet with a date. I copy paste the emails and I send it out. So it's not too much work. Made 80 grand in a month. But eventually, and it's happened a couple times, but eventually it got so bad in 2023 where whenever I'd have a big month, Stripe and PayPal would freeze my money. Because technically in the fine print, Sports betting is not allowed on Shopify. So I had money frozen and I ended up getting unfrozen, but I was like, bro, I cannot do this anymore. 
and thank goodness the guy that I had trained and put onto this, Spence McManus, he's big on Instagram. His, his username is Spence Locks now, and I put him onto sports betting content. He connected me with a guy named Noah, who is the CEO of Winnable, and he has a solution where you can sell picks on Winnable. So I'm like, all right, fuck it. I like Noah a lot. I like the guys at Winnable. I didn't really want to switch up my flow, but I switched it up. I started selling on Winnable. And the first month, second month, I was kind of just testing it out. But then the third month on Christmas morning, you can look at this up on Sports Betting Education YouTube, December 25th, 2023, I, did, I hit a sales pitch that was crazy. And not a lot of people bought at first. A lot of people bought, but not a lot. But then my picks won over and over. And then I interviewed a few clients and then the floodgates opened. So I ended up, driving traffic because I've created an offer. I got my buyers, my students that purchased that offer success. And then I interviewed them and everybody else saw that success. They saw how genuine my successful students were in the interview and then they all f piled in. So look, step one, make money. Step two, teach others how to make money and charge them. Step three, interview those people from step two. And then once you have interviews with real people, it shows all the others that are on the fence that are scared of con artists and getting scammed. Like, yo, this guy's not a scammer. He just interviewed a real dude that said he made money. And obviously, like, people can fake those interviews too. But in my interviews, they're so genuine, you can really tell that they're legit. And then the floodgates opened. So by New Year's 2024, that whole month of January, ended up making $203,000 on Winnable and then another 880,000 through affiliate marketing, promoting apps. So the way it works is the value of a user to the app is several hundred bucks. to like their valuation to the active users. So they'll gladly pay me $100 to bring them a new user. So if I bring them 1,000 users in a month, I'll get 100,000 bucks. So I had a few apps. I had Prize Picks, Dabble Fantasy, or dabble sports, whatever they call it. Chalkboard, I love chalkboard. And sleeper, I also love sleeper. Sleeper fantasy. Those four apps paid me another 180, okay? And 203 from Winnable. And it's just insane because all I'm doing is making sports content, getting sports fans to follow me, people that are interested in sports betting. And then I'm sharing apps with them. I'm sharing things that help them, betting tools, and I'm getting paid commission on that. And then I do all my research because I don't have a job. I can sit and watch sports games all day. So a lot of them have realized, and I'm a super intelligent dude as well, but a lot of them have realized that my guess is better than their guess. So they would rather pay me and ride the highs and lows with me and copy my picks as opposed to just putting their own guess work out there because a lot of these guys have families and jobs and they don't have time to watch the games, but they want to bet on the games. So they'll pay me and they'll pay for my winnable and I'll make money off that because it's so scalable. Like each individual person might be paying me 50 to $300, but they're getting hundreds of hours of my work and I'm posting it, but like it's scalable because it's a digital product, right? So that's how I did it, 380K in January, 2024. And then the 80K month was October, I believe October, 2021. Crazy. There's a gap there, huh? Um, but my breakthrough really, really came when I tore my Achilles and then another breakthrough when I found Winnable. So I'm at the Winnable house. Shout out to them. This background's sick. And this right here is motivation, boys. Like being here, this is a $12 million house. And I'm going to buy one of these for my own one day for my family. So this gets me fucking hype, boys. I'm 30 years old right now. I've got so much life ahead of me. And yeah, man, it's going to be fun. Um, it's going to be fun, the journey, and I'm going to document it on this channel. And my goal is to just document it so that I can watch it back for my own self-interest and I can show my son one day. Like, my son's one years old. He'll watch this video one day and be like, man, that's what my dad was doing when he was 30. And it also will help the young entrepreneurs. Like, hopefully that's who's watching this right now. But yeah, thanks for watching the video. I'll make more like this for sure. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're into entrepreneurship and just self-development. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day.